Hey guys, now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new 3D scanner that makes it incredibly easy to scan objects. It's very forgiving when it comes to scanning and speed. So you're not gonna be losing the tracking of what you're scanning as you might with other scanners. We're talking about the 3D Maker Moose. And this is a scanner that is just being released and is super easy to use. And it has a wide range of uses when it comes to scan types. Let's talk about the types of scanners that you can get because it also comes in two models. First of all, there is a Moose and a Moose Lite, and depending on which one you get, you get different scanning abilities. I have the standard Moose here, and it is 40% more accurate than scanners that you've seen from 3D Maker in the past. It has fantastic accuracy at 0.03 millimeters, um, and also has up to a 1,000 millimeter scan depth, or, or actually, a 100, and it has a 100 millimeter scan depth. It uses a blue light, source for its scanning. So it's a blue LED light source. It also supports 24-bit color uh, texture, 10 frames per second. And the scanning of an object could be as small as 15 millimeters all the way up to 1,500 millimeters. Translate that to inches, that's half an inch all the way up to 59 inches. So think about how big that is. That's pretty massive in size. USB 2.0. Um, and also is very light. We're talking about 280 grams. Now, when you use this scanner, you're gonna be able to get a lot of different formats out of it, given the free software that comes with the scanner. OBJ, STL, uh, PLY, and ASC as well. So let's take a look at the scanner. I'm gonna show you an object that I scanned. We'll see how it's able to reconstruct that item. And you'll learn more about why I'm so excited about this specific solution, because again, it makes scanning easy. All right, so let's take a look at the scanner for a minute. Uh, so scanner is a pretty simple device and it does come, or at least the model that I had came with this, uh, this uh, tripod here. And I use it as a handle as well as a tripod. But as we flip this over to the back, you'll notice it does have a USB-C connection in the back. It has a cable that has a splitter, uh, one for power and then one that goes into your computer. And there is a variety of ways that you would hold this. You notice that here you have all the technology that's doing all the scanning. Depending on how you're scanning, you may have it like this, right? And then what I've found myself sometimes doing is doing one of these things. So I've pulled it out and as I'm scanning something, you could rotate the software and then I scan like this, right? So this is the scanning model versus doing something like this, as I just mentioned. Uh, very easy to use and I found that, and you'll see this in the video, as I'm scanning the object, typically I would scan a device and go like this. And you'd be like really nervous because you didn't want to do it really fast and go very, very, very slow. Well, in this case, when I was at CES, I saw them doing one of these things. And I said, I have to get that one <laughs> because you're just going whoop, 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 and you're scanning things. That's what you want. That's how fast you want to be able to scan. So you'll see this in action. The quality that I've gotten out of my scans is really, really good as well. And I'm just really excited about you know, seeing something that is that easy to use. Okay, so now one of the things I really like about the Moose is how forgiving and how fast this thing can scan. And a couple things I wanna just mention I have going on. I have the rotating plate, but I'm not gonna use the table stand function. I'm actually gonna be doing the easy scan. So I have it plugged in and it's actually being powered and rotating. Here I have my MacBook Pro. This is like a 2022 MacBook Pro. And I have the software that is provided. And it's, by the way, it's free software that's provided with the actual um, scanner. And I have here the scanner in hand, and you're gonna see how quickly I'm gonna be going up and down and just scanning this statue. We love these type of statues around our home. So being able to create a copy of it that I can then print, and I can print it, let's say, in 3D uh, printed material in a different material type, like putting this in a marble, maybe putting it in a antiqued copper. There's a lot of different material colors that I could choose from, and I, I also can size this up, make it either bigger or smaller, turn it into bookends too. So let me show you how quickly this is gonna work and we're gonna be uh, focusing on two parts, right? First, I just wanna you know, show you the hand movements and how quickly we're gonna scan. So I have the software right here. And, um, and as you can see, just follow my finger, right here I have the scan button. And up here, I have a little preview window. We're gonna change our focus once I'm going through this so that you can see how that works. But for now, what I want you to see is how quickly I can scan this object and what I love about the rotating uh, tray is that it keeps my object in one area and then it allows me to move up and down very quickly without having to worry too much about positioning. And what I like about the scanner is that it doesn't lose my tracking. And typically what that means is that when you're scanning, if it's not able to connect the last point it scanned it to the current point it's scanning, it loses tracking and then it can't scan until those points get reconnected. So let's watch how this works. So I'm first, 
going to go ahead and put the scanner so it can see the object. And keep in mind that this is not a light object either. So this is a darker object. And over here, you're going to see that I am, like I have it in view. Now, the other thing is that you see this area right here. You want to make sure that this area, I'm going to pull back a little bit. You want to be not in the red zone, but we'll pull back a little bit. So you want to be in that zone. And notice how that blue area of the statue starts showing up, right? So I'm going to try, and notice how I pull back, how it captures more. Uh, I'm going to try, let me move this down so you can see it. You see the capture area? I'll do it on this side again so you can see it from over here. So as soon as I pull back, notice how the statue just pops into view, right? And that's because I am in the optimal scanning area. So as long as you have kind of like light blue area, you're going to get a really, really nice scan. And then look at how you can just go up and down, right? So let's go ahead and scan this so you can see how this works. I'm going to go ahead and scan. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I stay in that blue area, right? That blue wave. And I'm going to go up, down, over. Look how fast I'm doing this. Look at this. It's like very forgiving, even if it goes into the red. And I'm going up, I'm going down. I'm going to go ahead and try to get that base. And I don't really care if it gets the other base either because I'm going to knock that out later. But notice how I'm just moving, how quickly I'm moving the scan. I'll pull back to make sure I stay in, the, in that wave of light blue, right? And notice how I lost it for a second, but it, it picked up really, really quick. So I'm going to come back a little bit. I'm going to move this so I can get more, another portion of this base. And you can see how that base is scanning. I'm going to get that whole foundation because they had a lot of detail there, right? So we want to get all that detail. And once I get a good full rotation and I make sure that I have no holes, I'm trying to make sure I get a lot of detail. Well, the software is going to do some correction and it's going to solve for any missing pieces. I prefer to get as much as I can of the scan. That way it doesn't have to try to make up for that at all. So notice how I'm going over it. I'm going to try to get the face, I'm going to pull back a little bit, right? Pulling back. I'm going to get that arm right there. Make sure I get that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand up because I'm actually sitting down as I'm doing this. And I'm going to try to get the other upper portions of her hair and her scalp, right? And I'm just going to hold right here so that it can capture everything. And it is capturing. You can see how everything is coming up on screen. Look how fast this is going, right? And again, you're not seeing me make any terrible mistakes or having any of those moments where you lose the scan, right? So going through this, and I think that's enough. We're gonna, we're gonna see how much we have at this point, and I'm gonna hit done. Now, a couple of things are gonna happen now that I've got that taken care of, and we'll focus on the software now. So I'm gonna just pivot a little bit so that we can see this right here. And then what we'll do is we'll zoom in to the software. We'll pull a little bit over right here that's good and a couple things that are going to happen first of all i'm going to go ahead and allow this to process so it's going to go ahead and start processing the data that it's capturing we're going to give it a couple minutes depending on the power of your computer it can go slow it could go fast but you're noticing here in the background as it's processing it you're starting to see kind of like the elements of the of the statue really come to life so it's it's really all that detail is going to be coming in so we're going to let it go we're going to let it process, and then we'll come back to the video. Now, the processing is complete. Now, this is your first step. So it's taking the scan that we just made, and this is what uh, it was able to capture. Now, you're going to see that there's some, some patches, some areas that could be cleaned up. You can see on the top that I missed a little bit there, but we're going to see how well the software will go ahead and process. Now, I went ahead and I selected uh, some of the features that we have up here uh, just so that it could go through the uh, repair process and just give me a better view. So now the next step is to hit process. Now, when it's going to go through process, it's going to go ahead and basically ask me, like, what kind of detail do I want to work with? I'm going to go with high detail, and I'm going to leave that as generic. I'm going to hit apply. And now what it's going to do is it's going to go through and interpret that scan and convert it to an object that I'll be able to use for a 3D uh, printable model. So I'm going to let it run, and you'll see how easy this is, because literally all you have to do is scan it, process it, then uh, you're set to go. Now I've taken the statue that I scanned and I recreated a model. Look at this one, a teeny one, just to give you a sense of what the quality is gonna look like. So take a look at this. So here we can see all the quality associated uh, with this uh, now scan of the statue. 
And I have to say, if you take a look at this, the detail that this was able to capture is pretty spectacular. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it slowly. I was able to scan this and get rid of all the holes. So I did a one more scan just to make sure that there wasn't any holes underneath the chin. And you can see what the quality looks like. And this is where you see the, the ultimate potential of this product. You're gonna be able to scan car parts. You're gonna be able to scan uh, also, I would say engine parts. Uh, if you think about also electronics, you know, you know, little fixtures, little feet, like I did right here, a statue. Uh, anything half an inch all the way up to 59 inches. Now, if you see any quality differences here, you know, keep in mind that this is also a printer, right? So this could be printer related, but when you look at the amount of detail that you're getting here at the bottom, the detail that you're getting here in the robe, also all the characteristics of the body, this looks pretty good. And, you know, I was able to edit the base out and, you know, as it stands up, that's what it would stand like. And I can actually print this in any kind of material that I'd like. So all in all, Scanner does spectacularly well. And you can see the quality that I was able to get. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video. All in all, Scanner does spectacularly well. And you can see the quality that I was able to get.